check mic one two one two what's up my friends i'm the zim this is the zim video and this is the art professors podcast we come at you every week with another podcast about what it's like teaching art and making art and living life so last week i realized i was thinking like maybe i should flip flip it and start with the art stuff like the professor stuff so that's what we're going to do this week basically what we're going to do is the art stuff like being a art educator and then the art stuff and then the life stuff but the art and life stuff kind of go hand in hand today so we'll see how it goes just basically i have a list of things um and then we'll work backwards so yeah we'll talk about the yeah whatever man i don't know what's going on it's nine o'clock p.m friday night getting this thing going i've just been setting up my entire apartment to do this one day art exhibition which i'll show you at the end of the video basically we'll close it out with a little tour of the whole space and how i set it up but we'll get started with the conversation that's probably the one of the i think i'm going to title this one something like a art school should be a counterpoint counter counterpoint to ai not an advocate and then um and then also one day art show maybe something like that as well in the title so art school basically that's it right there art school should be a counterpoint to ai so there's more conversations obviously that's like a conversation ai and machine learning um there's more conversations that are just happening that's like the sort of the number one conversation right now is and it co always comes up it comes up every at least every other week if not every week like the idea of artificial intelligence machine learning and art school and i've just realized thinking about it in the environment that i'm in right now and what the priorities are i think regardless of whatever school whatever environment you're in art school should be the counterpoint and when you know when i say counterpoint if you don't know what it means or don't know what i'm saying it means the kind of not resistance necessarily but the the other side of it you know it's like when the rest of the school may be developing machine learning or really getting into it because they're in engineering and coding and those kind of things the art school should be a sanctuary almost of the opposite thinking it's like how do we maintain the humanity of ourselves you know and the art school should be a place where that's valued more than how we're accessing the cutting edge technology in a sense um with that being said you know there are lots of ways to use technology and art that aren't about machine learning and ai that still is using it as a tool i mean i don't know this conversation obviously can go a lot of different ways um, machine learning and AI can still be a tool, but I just really think it's more valuable. I, I would advocate it's way more valuable for the art schools to be the counterpoint to the AI, to be the, the ones that are making sure that, like I said, humanity is like the forefront of what it is, like working with your hands, especially like really teaching students and teaching people to you know think like for themselves and work with their hands and build things and be a part of the earth and be a part of the community and not worry about the over investment in what's the cutting edge technology it like doesn't matter it's like about the tradition a lot of times and it's about knowing the history and and reminding each other of the history in in our work you know and and having that conversation i don't know i just think we shouldn't be too excited about ai and machine learning we should be the, the space the space the art school should be the space that that's like not important at all it's just not important it doesn't need to be something that's put on the top level of thought processes it's like, okay, they're working in the engineering school and the other schools and whatever other spaces, 
that there that's their primary place in the art school it shouldn't even be like it should be just something that you talk about as a theoretical idea but not something you're investing energy in um as far as how you're teaching and what you're teaching there you go that's my belief on that whole point so that's basically the i think that's the 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 encapsulates everything i was going to talk about so we're in week six is starting or we just finished week six i guess we're starting week seven is that right um there's 15 weeks total are we halfway we're not halfway yet yeah seven so next yeah so next week it would be halfway it would be 14 weeks kind of but we're 15 weeks so yeah we're at week seven um things are going good not much to report i got my classes for next semester i learned that i'm teaching um all one day all my classes are one day so i'm teaching three classes did digital illustration one and two set sections of digital illustration two and they're all back to back starting at 11 a.m and i go basically i would leave if if i filled up the entire time i would leave at 8 p.m on tuesdays and thursdays which is going to be interesting i think it'll be fine i'll have um mondays and wednesdays and fridays off essentially and it, it kind of i mean i'll be prepping and all that stuff but um so but this next semester i'll have the classes will be built it'll be the first time really in the last three years that i haven't had to build a new class in a semester it'll be the, i'll have them already built because i'm teaching them this semester and so that should make it a lot easier and i'll have the sort of expectation as we know every class every group of students is different so even if you had one experience this some you know one time it's not going to necessarily repeat exactly the same next time so um but at least i won't have to actually sit down and type out like what my lessons are they'll be already typed out and i'll just make little adjustments as we go learning from what i learned this semester and apply it to next semester so i'm kind of looking forward to it i think next next i don't know knock on wood right next semester should be pretty it, it, it'll be a welcome break from go 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 of like constantly having to like do something new all the time so i'm i'm hopeful that it'll be a chance for me to kind of focus on my own work more uh, figure out what the future holds you know whether or not i have a car will make a difference at that time i'm kind of hoping that maybe by december i can some miracle can happen like i can sell some work or something that i can buy a car this is what i've been thinking like i want to buy a new car i do not want to buy a used car i want it to be under warranty and everything i've been looking and there's nothing for like thirty thousands, like your lowest you're going to pay for a decent car for new car and that's just like factory suggested so there i mean obviously there's some cars less than that but it's like probably you're looking at 40 to 50 for a decent car and i want to have like a at least twenty thousand the down payment on it so i don't have to have like big payments i don't know so that's the hope so that'll affect a lot so maybe next semester maybe the the universe is already saying you know zim you're probably not going to have a car so you're going to be taking the bus through the snow and all that bs so um we'll make it easy on you with your class load <laughs> you know maybe it's already looking ahead for me but i wanted to so i wrote down on my thing here if um little advice to grad students advice to grad students if you happen to come across this i was thinking about making a separate video about this but maybe i will still but i said my advice to grad, i've probably said this before in one of my other videos but my advice to grad students is to understand the end goal as soon as possible like one thing that didn't happen for me was they didn't clearly explain like you knew there was a thesis coming up but they didn't tell you what it was and how it like a visualized i didn't have a clear real visualization of what that meant and one of the things that connected to that like the thesis paper the thesis show and kind of what's the word where you de not deconstruct but reverse engineer kind of reverse engineer what you need to do to achieve that thesis goal um it took me 
a li- I mean, I didn't know. It took me a while to figure it out. Like I was floundering. My first full year of grad school was really like, thank God it was three years because if it was only two, I would have probably been on a completely different trajectory than I am right now with my art making. But, but because of that first year was just like floundering, figuring things out, getting back in the rhythm of being an, a visual artist and those kind of things. But one of the things that that was told during that first year was, or inspired to do in a sense was to start taking notes in a different way when critiques were happening and those kind of things. Um, so that's like number two or, and it ties directly into the number one advice of understanding your end goal, understanding that thesis show and thesis and what that looks like really um, holistically, but taking notes along the way, which I started to do, but didn't realize I wasn't doing good enough because whenever I was in a seminar class, I was just kind of getting through the seminar class and basically throwing out everything that was, um, that I kind of, all the writing, all the papers that we had to read and those kind of things where they should have been, I should have been using those as like, content for my thesis whenever something even slightly related to what i was working on or i should have been aware to be ready to find something that i was working on like because you might not know what your thesis is going to be until the final of the year and then you're doing your seminar work earlier so you might you just got to be ready to go like oh we talked about that in that class and i can use that in my thesis paper, you know, so like I didn't do that. So all my research for my thesis was done during my thesis writing. It, anything that I was given previous that I could have used, I forgot about. I didn't think to take proper notes about. Um, so that's my note. That's my two pieces of advice. Know what your end goal, like not necessarily what your work's going to be about, but what the container is going to look like. Like, what is that container of the thesis and thesis show look like? And and then take notes along, the, like, from the moment anybody says anything about your work, like, document, like, heavily everything people say about your work. Take lots of notes, especially when they're referencing other artists. Every time another artist, they say, your work looks like or makes me think of, yeah, because then you want to go research those artists because those will be used in your thesis paper because you need to be defending your point. You have to defend your artwork by using history is one way to defend it, using the tradition of artists to defend it. All right. I talking about, um, okay, looking at the institution of higher learning. So this is kind of a tangent to being an art professor in a way, but it relates because the art schools tend to be the most sort of liberal spaces in a university. You know, you're pretty much, you know, you're pretty safe having progressive ideology in a, in an art school. There's every once in a while, there's a conservative uh, mindset that you run into, but really it's overwhelmingly progressive. I don't like to use the word liberal because it's, 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 not quite i don't know there's a it's been getting redefined in a way lately and i don't i don't like the the way it yeah the idea of it so i like to think progressive mindset um and there's this talking point right now in culture like people especially conservatives say that universities are trying to indoctrinate people to be more liberal and anybody with sort of half a brain knows that you just become more liberal and more progressive when you actually become more educated because you, your empathy goes up, you know, you, you understand the world better. You, you have empathy for different ways and points of view. So you just, you're just a nicer person and the conservative ideology just doesn't care about empathy. So that's just part of it. So it's not that they, people are trying to make anybody more progressive and you know that way it's just you just become it because you become educated so there's that thing and the other part of it though it's it's a total oxymoron because the universities right now it is a capitalist institution so no matter how liberal you think that people are or progressive you think people are becoming within these institutions, the institution itself is fundamentally opposite of that. 
So it's just a total like mind F that you really don't, it's not as like indoctrinated as you think it is because the, the university itself st still is fundamentally focused on the bottom line of how much money they're making. And that is a, you know, a, that's a conservative viewpoint. That's a non-liberal, non-progressive viewpoint on the world is how much money does something making versus how much it's supporting society. It's like, well, are we making enough money? That's, and so, you know, no matter how progressive you are, you're, you're always going to be stunted because the institution that you're involved with is, uh, there was a word I'm looking for, fundamentally, you know, non-progressive space <laughs> because of their focus on needing to make money. So it's just, I just find it funny when I hear people saying that universities are progressive, you know, indoctrinating spaces. All right. Couple more things on the list today. Okay, this might be a short one. Oh no, well, it'll be longer because I'm gonna give you a tour in a moment. But I applied to another school. So I'm up to two schools and five applications. So last time or a couple couple podcasts ago, I told you I applied to the University of Washington. I applied to two positions there, which I I don't know. I don't know how I feel totally about going to the University of Washington. There's part of me that's like, it's the only thing that would bring me back to Seattle would be a job at the University of Washington. The only thing there's be, I don't know, maybe not the only thing I should never say never. Right. But it really, there's not a lot that really makes me want to say, I want to go back to. So with that, like knowing I'm just not overly inspired to go back to Washington, I'm in Seattle. I'm, I'm like, do I really, is this really what I would want? I don't know. It'd be interesting. I, Cause there was part of me for a moment. I was like, this would be perfect. You know, I'd be able to get back and be closer to my kids. I don't know, but there's still, there's part of me that's like, hmm, maybe, maybe not. So anyways, I applied to School of Art Institute Chicago, which I've applied to before for a visiting faculty position, but I, and I applied to something else. I've applied there, I think five times total over the years, but this time I applied there to three different positions, um, the painting and drawing department, a department they call contemporary like issues or contemporary something, uh, not contemporary. Is it contemporary? Yeah, I think it might be contemporary, but basically it's like the foundation courses. Um, it's like new student type things. And then the performance and you know, they just call it performance, but in their listing had social practice in there, which is the part that I'm, I mean, my work's performance, but I know it's not what most people think of performance art. My art doesn't fall in that kind of esoteric kind of, you know, sometimes hard to watch performance artwork that people do. Mine's a little more straightforward, a little, way more accessible, less esoteric, less, it's not, you know, like, uh, I can't think of the other word I'm looking for, but it's not trying to hide meaning it's like i mean all my work's straight on it's like on the nose so and same with my performances but what i'm really interested in is the perfect the um the social practice kind of part of it so and so i applied to all of them i told them in my cover letter co cover letter that i'm applying to all the three positions and my cover letter covers something about each position already i didn't have to really edit i was planning on kind of editing my cover letter to you know, address each one when I applied to that position. But then I read it, I was like, well, that's for performance and social practice. That's for drawing and, you know, that kind of thing. And that's for, um, you know, foundation level. So it was all right there. It's already kind of how I work, how I think about my, you know, so fingers crossed. I, it looks like an awesome school. Chicago would be perfect. Like it's checking a lot of boxes. I mean, it's not, I thought, you know, part of me is thinking I want to be at a state school, but this is like a private art institute, um, I believe, but um, it's different. It'll be a small, it'll be kind of like RIT in size um, or something. It'll be, but it's specifically an art school, which I'm excited about. Like I would love, I would love to teach like foundations to like art students, you know, this year, this semester I'm teaching drawing for non-majors. 
and there are some art adjacent students in it but not like art you know school of art students so i would love to teach some foundations to to students that know this is their path you know and then hopefully you know ideally it's an art school that wants to make artists and not it's not a commercial art school it's a art school for artists you know but i don't know that much about it yet so fingers crossed anyways the bottom line is fingers crossed wish me luck that they you know all these schools actually call me back or email me and say we want you to come interview because i would crush right i think i'll do good. the only thing i'm worried about is if any school wants me to do like a workshop so i really don't like i'm not a workshop person i don't have a lot of workshops i have my one tunnel book workshop but i don't know i'd much rather you know switch it to just critique you know do my artist talk go to a classroom and critique but not have to actually give a lesson for the interview which i know some schools want but i'll figure it out i'll just be like what do you want <laughs> how can i i don't know what do you want me to teach You're like how do you want me to do it what's ideal what's the ideal version um so there we go um i wanted to kind of complain here for a second so one school on my the job board missouri state university different than where i taught i taught at northwest missouri state this is missouri state university they titled a job position artist in residence and then they say it's a 4-4 working load so either somebody either i don't they they mislabeled it because typically an artist in residence is there to work on their art and maybe they teach one class you're not teaching four classes each semester you're not gonna have any time to work on your art so it's not an artist in residence so it really bothered me <laughs> seeing that title and then reading the description i was like what are you talking about so hopefully they fix it um i don't know what they're thinking i would never I would, i'm not trying to go back to the midwest to be honest so i'm not applying to that a couple um before i give you the tour of the exhibition that i set up for tomorrow a um, couple other things to mention i find i got i meant to mention this while because i got it a while ago but i'll try to hide everything that's important on it but i'll just kind of hide everything i got my driver's license for new york i meant to get like the the upgraded one that's like for what you need to get on airplanes, but I guess I didn't do it right. So I'll have to go back and get the enhanced one at some point, but I don't know. I won't, if that's not till t next year, I don't know when I need to have that. So I got my driver's license, but I also am registered to vote too. The little sheet of papers over there, but I'm registered to vote, ready to go. It'll be the first time, unless I change it, I don't know, I'll probably just do it. It'll be the first time in my life that I've gone to an actual, place to vote i've in washington and california they've all i've been kind of absentee or mail-in ballots the whole time i've never gone into a room filled out a thing in the little cubbies and then done that it'll be the first time I've, i'll ever do that so i'm not looking forward to it to be honest um i'd rather I, that kind of stuff makes me anxious i'd rather do a mail-in situation but um well i'll figure it out it'll be fine um all right here we go. What I'm going to do now, give you a little, uh, up, just not just a uh, little, what's the word I'm looking for? Explanation of what we're about to do. I'm going to switch to my phone on my camera and walk around my apartment and kind of just give you a tour. Of, it's pretty much all ready to go. There's a few things which I'll mention when I'm walking around what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I invited everybody I could think of. Um, with you know almost everybody 90 percent of the people i could think of um i invited to come all my students i invited other colleagues of the school a couple of people said they were gonna show up i don't care honestly i don't care if anybody shows up i'm really i've learned i just had a conversation with a friend today that you know even when i was young i started to understand that in middle school that i was not the person I've, ne I've never been the person that people like gravitate toward to do things with such like when I was a kid, I was, you know, we would call our friends up and say, Hey, you know, Johnny, do you want to play? Do you want to do something? 
And I was always the, I, people never called me. I never was the one getting called. I was, I always had to call my friends to do something. You know, I was always the one calling to go like, hey, you mind if you, you want to get it together today or Saturday and do something? I was always the one. So that kind of sat in my brain and that's kind of, and as I've gotten older and then after the divorce, especially, but there's been times in my life where I just gotten more and more comfortable just going, you know, I don't care if anybody shows up. I'm having fun doing this for myself. You know, when I do, so I've done um, these uh, secret cafes, I call them where I make breakfast for friends and family. And I don't, you know, sometimes people don't show up and I just, I mean, I haven't done it for a while cause I'm not around friends and family right now, but for the last few years, but I would invite people to come over and I would make them breakfast. And um, sometimes people wouldn't show up and I was like, that's cool. Like it got me to clean my house. It looks real nice in here. I, I got to eat some really great breakfast, you know? <laughs> so it wasn't, um, I don't know. And I've learned to not, not care, you know? so regardless of what happens tomorrow if people come that's great obviously the goal for me the idealized version is a bunch of people come and one or two or three or five or all of them go this is really cool let's help you get it out in public you know let's help you put it somewhere other than just in your apartment you know like your work in general but especially the 47 drawings of, of kamala harris so or they take pictures and they post on their social or somebody that they know goes like, Oh, that was cool. What was that all about? And so at some point, some snowball effect starts. And if it could happen with a little one day art show that I put in my apartment, then awesome. That would be amazing. If some snowball effect of something more happening for me, selling my work, getting more shows, getting artist talks and those kind of things started, but I don't expect it because it hasn't happened yet. Um, but you never know, but I still like to do this kind of stuff. All right, I don't know what else I need to, maybe I'll come back if I feel like I need to say something, but we're gonna, I'm gonna jump over. The next time you see me here, we'll be on the different camera pointing around the space. Um, and I'll just kind of walk you through the space. All right, let's do this. All right, here we are, I'm gonna, Flip the camera so you won't see me. I'm just gonna be pointing at the space um, in a second, but we're gonna start right here. That's where I just was sitting, right there. So we're gonna start in this, the main room here. I'll kind of walk around it and then we'll work through the rest of the rooms. All right, so the front door is right there. So once somebody comes in, they kind of will see the wall here, potentially look, glance over this way. We'll get back there in a second but they'll come into the main space. Let me change my, I'm gonna change it to the wide angle here. So they come into the main space. Um, I have um, a little guest book here I set up. I'll talk about these boxes here in a second. We'll get back to those. But then I have a little note on the wall telling people to take pictures and post on social, hopefully, if they see that. We have, I rearranged, if, if you remember, there was this, the hole right there. So I decided to, I rearranged my plug situation underneath it so that I shifted all of the Harris drawings over one up to that point so that they could just all fit on the wall. So all the Harris drawings are on the wall now. So that's the main event of the, the exhibition. But I was like, I'm just gonna hang more work up. So I've had this trans rights one up for a minute. I moved it over put a couple of my older drawings up there, put this, that post, that big drawing up there. Um, I'm thinking about, I might have something running on the computers, I'm not sure. One of the things that could happen if people want to, if they see this, now, I'm not gonna talk about it, but if somebody's milling around and they see this, I will draw somebody a portrait of Kamala Harris right tomorrow, during, it only takes me about a, probably 20 minutes to do it so I could, do that. I'm not selling these ones um, separate. So if somebody wants the 47, they have to buy all of them. So another thing I did is I set up my tunnel books here. So I was like, man, why not just go ham? Why not just put everything out? So I put my tunnel books up, have a little note not to touch them, but I also put out my mat, some masks here from some of the things I did. I'm thinking about removing this stuff up here and putting my iPad here and playing the Made in America 
uh, video that goes with the masks. So maybe that'll happen. Um, so that's pretty much, oh, one last thing in the main room here is I had, I converted this tub here. So like basically all my other drawings are in this tub that people can flip through if they want to look at other drawings I've done. And then my Justin Jones, my 7269 basically exhibition is all in, behind here. The only thing, there's still some artwork in rolls back there and that box on the floor right there is, or little whatever is, the Katanji Brown Jackson drawings, so I'm not gonna open that up. But then they can come, you know, walk around here. I'll be, I still need my vacuum, so I left it out. Nothing's in the kitchen really, but I'm gonna be setting up this room. I already got some stuff ready to go. I'm gonna have some beverages and other things in this area, some refreshments. Um, I put some things on the wall, but mainly I put this artwork on the wall over here. So a couple big things. This is where I sleep right now, but this is like converts into a couch. So I'm gonna convert it into the couch. So we can kind of use this as a social space. People, if, if people come in, they can hang out in here. They can hang out in the main room. If there's, I don't know, more than 10 or so, hopefully we have enough space to stretch out. Um, I don't think there's anything else to tell you about that room, but I did put some art in a sense in my bathroom. And I was thinking about, since it's a kind of a political themed show, I put these uh, boxes in the, in the shower and on the floor there and wrote the top secret on them. I was thinking about, um, I'm going to flip the camera here. All right. So that was the, everything you saw, but I left you at the boxes in the bathroom. Um, and I'll talk to you about them here. Um, I was, you know, I'm not really trying to be satirical. I'm not, a, I'm not, but I just, because it's kind of a presidential, you know, kind of, I don't know. I just thought it would be kind of funny. So, and I was thinking about writing like something, I was thinking about writing things specific to Donald Trump and like, you know, box full of racism or box full of like dogs eating, you know, eating dog or you know that whole like ever, all this stupid stuff that he said but i was just like yeah maybe that's too satirical and too on the nose and then i was like trying to figure out what i put on it and then so i started thinking like why don't i just say um top secret and people will get the get the joke you know it's just kind of like especially since they're in the bathroom um and yeah so hopefully i don't know maybe it's Maybe it's too stupid, but I just think it's fun to kind of like be more installation with the whole idea too and, and just play, just have a, just have fun. Just, I'm just having fun. <laughs> the bottom line is having fun. One thing though, I, I thought I had the red vinyl, but I didn't have any red. It's red vinyl that I cut. I cut red vinyl to put on them. Um, and I thought I had red vinyl, which I do, but it's iron on vinyl. And I thought I had sticky vinyl but i didn't and i was like god darn it where am i gonna find red vinyl so i i just walked i just was like crossing my fingers and i was like maybe the dollar store dollar general there's a dollar general by my house which is the grossest store i've ever one of the grossest stores i've ever been that is they need i just my ocd when i go in there not i mean i'm not trying to make fun of that idea but i do i I physically want to clean it up when I'm there, when I'm in there. I want to just like hire me and I will clean this. I will organize it because it's like the most, it's not only dirty, there's dirt like on the register. There's like dirt, layers of dust and dirt on like things. But then it's just, it's just so chaotic and not organized whatsoever. So, but anyways. I went in there thinking like, maybe they have it. Maybe I'll get lucky. And they had some red vinyl on that. I was so surprised. I was like, this is, this is really cool. So I bought some red vinyl and picked up some of the other things I got. So some of the other things, so there's this cafe across the street that just opened a Ukrainian um, run uh, pastry dessert shop really is what it is. I thought it was a more of a traditional cafe, but it's a dessert shop. So I bought some cookies from them and some macaroons that are in the fridge. I'll bring out tomorrow. And then tomorrow I'll also like halfway, like at one o'clock, I'll order some pizza. There's a little Caesars right down by, by my house that I'll order, bring that in um, at a point. And I'm planning in the morning, I plan to walk to this bakery. The 
a bakery that I talked to you about last time or a, a breakfast place that was the Mad Hatter. Um, they have a whole like just kind of cafe bakery cafe part as well. So I'm going to get some other more breakfast, like more breakfasty kind of stuff like uh, coffee cakes and things like that. So because I have a lot of sweets that I got from the cafe across the street. So I'm going to get some coffee cakes and more pastry like breakfasty early day kind of vibe. I bought a coffee maker for this. It's a small one. It's only a five cup coffee maker, but I'll just get the coffee going in the morning. It'll get the aromas going in the place. Um, sometimes this the paper that I drew these drawings on, depending on what's happening, can um, smell bad. <laughs> Basically, it's if those of you that have been around for a while, when I started the 7269 exhibition, planning for that, I was gonna use the same paper. And when I practiced on it, it was like, had it was releasing this really bad smell. And I was worried that it was going bad, which it could have been. But now that I've been using it for a while, it seems to be holding up fine. It's just the sizing, which if anybody knows about watercolor paper and that kind of thing, they use a sizing, that's an animal product. So that's what it is. It's like basically rotting animal product on the um, paper. And when it gets wet, it, it's like a wet dog kind of, you know, like that's what it kind of smells like wet dog um, when it's not very clean. So, but when it gets humid outside, I've noticed when there's a lot of humidity, they, I can smell it. It like saturates the paper and you can start smelling it. When it's more arid and not as humid, I, it smells fine. So hopefully tomorrow will be, it's supposed to be sunny tomorrow. So we'll see how it goes. Um, <clears throat> so I plan to get some more pastries um, and then we're pretty much set. I got a vacuum, my room, you know, where, where the food will go. But other than that, I think I'm pretty ready for it. So I'm excited. See, see what happens, see if people come through. But wish me luck, everyone. All right, as always, as always, be loving, kind, and patient. And well, if you have any comments for me, drop them in the comments on YouTube. Find the YouTube video of this, this kind of idea. And let me know what you think. A little bit crazy. I'm a little bit, I think it's because I don't know, lots going on. It's 10 o'clock now almost for me. Um, not as, I'm kind of not as calm as I normally am with these things. My plan is to, I, I put them on the schedule for every Friday. My plan is to record them in the morning, but because I was prepping, like I prepped all day. I've been working all day. I got up at like eight in the morning maybe. And I just, I really didn't eat much today. I, I finally ate like before I recorded this, but I was, I was just kind of going, I was just working and I just wasn't inspired to stop and cook anything because I didn't have anything quick really that, and then my TMJ issue still, so it's hard just to like snack on stuff. So I was just like working, I was like, screw it. I'll just keep working, but there we go. I think I covered it all. If you have any questions for me, I'd love to hear from you. Drop them in the comments and hopefully, yeah, I'll get to hear from you someday. As always, be loving, kind of patient. Peace, my friends. Bye.